Hello everybody, it's Rick. It is December the 16th, 2019. My email address is rick, R-I-C-K-0327 at me.com. You're going to email me if you're interested in receiving paperwork to challenge child support people, court, so the child support agencies, uh, DMV, your employer, I uh, have, have well over 60 affidavits for many different scenarios uh, for a reasonable gift, very reasonable. Okay, um, I'm not a legal professional. I will not be holding your hand. Okay, uh, I'm not allowed to personally get involved in your case. Okay, so if you're... If you're interested, you're just going to email me just for child support. Okay, I don't get involved in criminal matters, traffic tickets, just child support. Okay, and if you're getting divorced, I don't get involved in that either. I have experience in it because I've been divorced, but I tend not to get involved with that because uh, that's, that's not easy stuff. Okay, uh, just real quickly, if you're getting divorced, when you signed the marriage certificate, what you did was you gave the state jurisdiction over your domestic issues. So that's the reason why they are, uh, they have jurisdiction to order custody, order child support because you signed a Again, it's 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 like the driver's license thing. Um, what what they're famous for doing, our government or governments, state governments, is they tell you you must do something, like getting a driver's license. Many of you know if you're into doing research about um, the legal system is. You do not drive. You're only driving when you're performing a commercial act. When you're when you're in your vehicle, operating your 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 motor vehicle for personal reasons, you're traveling. Uh, all you have to do is uh, I could just tell you, like if you're from New York, the the wonderful governor here, he's uh, big into uh, you know asserting martial law. And what he does is he, he issues travel bans. And that's proof right there that when you're in your vehicle, you're traveling. That's why it's called a travel ban. B-A-N, ban. But they tell everybody you have to get a driver's license. Well, they do that because they make money on it. Also, when you sign your driver's license, you're giving jurisdiction. You're, you're agreeing to the rules of the road. So that's the reason why they're allowed to take a picture of your car if you go through a red light or you're speeding and, and send the ticket to whoever, you know, to the owner of the car. Okay? To me, that's, a, that's not a, a proper contract because you were not advised of your rights. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say may and can be used against you. That, that type of warning should be given to every man and woman anytime you're signing a, a contract with the government. You're supposed to be advised of your rights. But being that trickery is uh, a, a good way of getting somebody's signature on a contract... They trick you all the time. And then when people make videos pointing this out, they're called conspiracy theorists. Okay, so well, that's the same the same thing with a, with a marriage license. So uh, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to argue. What I would argue is, uh, well, when I signed the marriage certificate, I was not advised that I was giving the state jurisdiction in all domestic matters. And that actually, if you make that argument and you and you stick to it, 
you can negate the contract because it, you signing the marriage certificate, marriage license was done on the you know on the misrepresentation and misrepre the misrepresentation is grounds for fraud. Um, there uh, there's a form going around on the internet. Uh, somebody sent it to me. Uh, yeah, somebody sent this to me. And this is uh, dated December 15th, 1985, uh, from a director of the Department of Public Safety in the state of Arizona. Uh, and if you see here, it's state of Arizona with a big S, which really means it's a uh, corporation. It's the corporation of Arizona. It's not the, uh, the territory. And I'm going to show you the law on that, too. It is the big S state which really means the corporation and the small s, which really means the territorial uh, boundaries by, um, you know, boundaries of the state that you see on a map for citizens of the state. Anyway, it's come to my attention that numerous individuals in our state have rescinded all of their contracts with the United States federal government, the state of Arizona, and each of its political subdivisions, establishing themselves as free men under the organic national constitution of the Republic of the United States of America. Consequently, they may be driving, see, driving, but they're not driving, they're traveling without auto registration, driver's license, or any other evidence of contract. Because many law enforcement personnel may be unaware of the contractual nature of auto registration and driver's license, it is conceivable that this situation may lead to confrontation between these individuals and law enforcement. I urge you to inform yourself and your personnel about this matter as soon as possible. If you would like to be briefed by someone knowledgeable on this subject, please contact me. In the meantime, inasmuch as this procedure is entirely appropriate when properly carried out, I would like to be personally notified of every such instance of confrontation in order that the persons involved, <clears throat> not persons, humans involved, and the public officials involved may be apprised of the correct procedure and the appropriateness of their action on the part of the concerned. My office number is phone number, but this is going back 30 years ago. Okay. This is proof that this is true. You're getting a driver's license, it's a contract. Marriage license is a contract. And everything they do is not to benefit you. Okay. Everything is a trick. You have to be careful, okay? You have to be careful, all right? I'm going to show you another thing. This is all the rage right now on the internet. I get e I got a lot of emails about this one here, all right? This thing here, the color of law form. I used to give this out a couple of years ago. It was part, of, I had it, and uh, I used to give a, a lot of, uh, PDFs in my paperwork and when I stopped doing it because first of all it was free I was I cannot I'm not gonna I can't ask anybody for a gift for stuff that's free on the internet and then also what happens it's it's if it's it, for some reason if I have it for too long the PDF expires and you know I have people complaining it just wasn't worth the aggravation but I'm gonna I'm gonna show you that that these things here they you got to be careful they're sneaky Okay, now what you're doing here, all right, I get, I get it. You're, you're giving somebody a warning. All you're doing is giving a warning under color of law, all right? First of all, it says citizen signature. You don't want to be a citizen. If anything, you want to be a state citizen. When you're, in a, when you're a United States citizen, you only have 14th Amendment rights. You don't have the rights of, of, the, of your state, Okay. Attempting to cause a person to do something by telling that person that such action is required by law when it is when it is not required. You're not a person. 
You're a human. You're a man. You're a woman. Okay? See the trickery? You're acknowledging that you're a person by using this. They're trapping you. You think they make these, these, these forms out of the goodness of their heart? The government? You have to be careful. All right? You could do this on your own if you want. Write it up and just... Make it known that you're not a, you're not a person. You're a human. You're a man. You're a woman. A person is. This is 28 U.S.C. 3002. Okay. This is proof that the United States is a corporation. Okay. This is on the uh, Cornell.edu. Excuse me. Website. Okay. Court means any court created by Congress of the United States, excluding the United States tax court. Okay? Debtor means a person who is liable for a debt. Okay? Number 10. So it would be 3002, subsection 10. Person includes a natural person, including an individual Indian, a corporation, a partnership, an unincorporated association, a trust, or an estate, or any public or private entity. Okay, you know that you see you see anything about a human being there, a man or a woman? Let's look up includes. That's one of those tricky words. Not limiting, or not limiting. The term includes, including, or not limiting. Okay. Person not limiting a natural person. Okay, so you don't want to be a person. You want to be a man or a woman. You want to be a human. Okay. So that means if you're a person, you're under the jurisdiction of the United States, the corporation of the United States. So you might want to think twice about using this form. All right. And listen, guys, I don't play that game. Uh, I, I I know the channel that did. He's a good dude. I have no problem with the guy. He does, as far as I'm concerned, he does a lot of good work. All right? I'm just telling you to be careful. If you want to use it, go right ahead. But there's a reason why whenever people assert their, their rights as a man or a woman, the court automatically tries to label you a sovereign citizen because they're trying to... because that's what they're trained to do. All your rights are as a man a woman, a people, okay? So in the Constitution of the United States, uh, you're a man and you're a woman, you're a people. You have rights, unalienable rights, private rights given to you by God, not by the government. The government's forbidden to take away these rights, but they do, and I'm going to show you how to get away with it. All right, so... Uh... Real quickly, attacking an erroneous judgment by means of writ of habeas corpus. All right, just so you'd see, a writ of habeas corpus can be used to attack a void judgment. I provide you guys with a writ of habeas corpus, and I could tell you from the people that have done it, the resistance is unbelievable. The, the clerks give resistance. And the court refuses to acknowledge that you you can, even though right here there's case laws in here that says you you can. Okay, Tweed vis, versus Viscombe, uh, Meyer versus Nebraska are all case laws that says writ of habeas corpus can be used for restraints that are not uh, not not pre, not not physical restraints. Okay. I'll leave this in the uh, description. All right, just wanted to show you that real quick. So, if you have a void judgment, a a support order issued by a fake judge or a judge, and you were not, and you did not waive your rights, it's a void contract because you're entitled to any controversy of twenty dollars or more. You're entitled to a trial by jury. Okay, I, and I'm not the only one saying this. There are a lot of reputable channels out there saying the same thing. 
Okay. Of of course you'd want a trial by a jury because you want you want a a jury of people. We already know that the judge is working for the state. The judge is not there to help you out. The judge doesn't work for you. The judge works for the state. Okay? So you'd much rather have a, a, a trial by jury or jury of peers. They don't want you to notice. And when you try to assert it, they fight you tooth and nail. People using my writ of habeas corpus is... Uh, we, I've never seen more responses with the one line, uh, writ of habeas corpus uh, denied. They don't have the jurisdiction to deny it. So the next move would be to sue them because they don't have the jurisdiction to deny. A writ of habeas corpus cannot be denied unless uh, we're at war or there's a martial law. And no judge is going to admit we're under martial law, even though some people believe that we are. Okay, but I'm not going to get into that. But they're not going to admit it. Just like a judge is not going to admit that they're uh, proceeding under admiralty. All right, so. All right, so here's the thing. We want to make it simple, the whole child support process. I get emails all the time because people get confused. And I, this is not the first time I've made a video like this, but. I haven't made a video in a while. Uh, you know, I've covered almost everything. But it's always good to remind everybody that the one thing we all have in common, being men and women, fathers, mothers, is we have inalienable rights secured by the Constitution, secured by the United States Constitution, of the United States of America and your state constitution, okay? So we gotta make it simple. They purposely use uh, administrative and judicial processes because it's hard to understand. Who's gonna go into court and argue this stuff? Because you're not gonna understand it, right? So. Child support process. It, some states use administrative, others use judicial. I mean, that's the reason why all these lawyers are making so much money. That's the reason why they're all in on the scam with the child support racket. That's the reason why it's so difficult to get a dismissal, because everybody's in on the racket. The reason why there's, there's really no silver bullet with this stuff, because they don't want this to go away. Okay. A lot, of, a lot of lawyers put their kids through college on other people's misery. All right? I was one of these people. I did everything I was supposed to do. I honored my divorce agreement, and I still got taken to court, and they just ignored all of my evidence that I never missed a payment, that I was, I was not in arrears, even though it, two years later... They readjusted my support going back to 2007 on a case that started in 2010, which was right there illegal. You cannot retroactively go before the date of filing. Your case begins at the date of filing. They do that with you guys as well. They'll say, oh, your old child support going back 10 years. You, especially... Uh, because uh, let's say you were you didn't they didn't establish paternity then if they establish paternity they go back 20 years you could only be charged with non-payment of support if you if it's a willful act I've, I've mentioned this in past videos it has to be a willful act and that's the reason why they also cannot arrest you for contempt because you have to have the ability to pay if you cannot pay you're not making a willful act. A lot of times they they saddle people with these uh, crazy child support uh, awards where you cannot, you know, you, you can't make the payments and they don't care. So you'd have to take them to court and say that, um, you know, you you, you you cannot, you're not able to make the payments. And then the, the case uh, is Turner versus Rogers. Supreme Court case. But let me get back to this. All right. Uh, so the child support process is administrative and judicial 
what do we all have in common? We all have constitutional rights. So what we're going to do, and right here, this is, uh, I'll leave this in the, um, this is right here if you want to look. That's the, uh, that's the link, okay? And this will show you what your state is, whether your state is judicial or administrative. Okay, basically almost every state is both uh, is judicial. Some some are just judicial. A lot of them are both. So right there and there, you know, it's not fair. You're not only are you supposed to know the state law for you know judicial. You're supposed to know the administrative law too. That's not fair. So what's the best thing to do? Well, we're going to use our rights under the Constitution. All right, so any law repugnant to the Constitution is void. It's really that simple. So if they issued you, if, uh, if here's the, here's how they get around it with the um, expedited processes. One second, guys. Expedited processes under forty five CFR three hundred three point one zero one now. You have to consent to this, okay? This is why in my past videos, I'm, I'm keep telling you guys you have to consent. You have to consent because you have rights secured under the Constitution. Now, if you're having expedited processes and you're entitled to a trial by a jury for any controversy of twenty dollars or more, how are they going to give you a trial by a jury if it's expedited? They need your permission. Okay, and here's how they get around it. They just throw in, uh, they just throw in this line: safeguards under expedited process under subsection C. The due process rights of the parties involved must be protected. That one line makes it legal for them, because they're saying, "Well, we're acknowledging that we have to protect the due process rights." of the parties involved. So you have to can you have to object saying, well my due process rights are being violated. Okay, and the way you get around that also is you file an objection. Also you have to verbalize it. I know it's a lot, but the I, I guys they they made this complicated on purpose. So again, I'm trying to make it i I'm simplifying it for you by telling you that your due process rights must include uh, due process under the law of the land, okay? And it must be uh, by a judgment of peers, okay? So um, this is uh, an 1856 case, Murray's Lessee versus Hoboken Land and Improvement, Supreme Court, 1856. The words due process of law were undoubtedly intended to convey the same meaning of the words by the law of the land. Okay. And let's get around all the words, but here, but by a judgment of his peers. You see, uh, but by the judgment of persons, peers, no, his peers, or the law of the land. Okay, the Constitution of the United States, as adopted, contained the provision, the trial of all crimes except in cases of impeachment shall be by jury. Okay, by the 6th and 7th Articles of Amendment, further provisions were separately made for the mode of trial in civil and criminal cases. Okay, uh, the 7th Amendment. It has to be a controversy of twenty dollars or more. Okay, so declared that. Well, here we go. That no person shall be deprived of his life, liberty, and property. Oh yeah, because uh, they they're quoting seventeen. I don't know how how. Seventeen eighty seven. Okay, the words of Magna Carta. Uh, see. I think that they added that in there. No person shall be deprived of life. Cause I don't believe they were calling people persons back then. So anyway, just just know that you're uh, under the Constitution. You're entitled to a judgment by peers. 
Okay. And this is again, this is Murray's lessee versus Hoboken land. So I'm showing you that you're entitled to a judgment by peers. How do you get a judgment by peers? A trial by jury. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so again, the United States Constitution, state constitutions are the law of the land, and thereby all federal and state courts and officers of the court, lawyers, judges, and judge surrogates, fake judges included, and thereby they all have a duty by oath to support it. What's it? The Constitution, both state and federal, United States Constitution. Okay, so you got to notify them in the beginning. All right, so you you have to object. If you don't object, it's it's implied that you're accepting. Okay, this is how sneaky they are. So you're going to ask the court the final questions. Am I a man or a woman? You want to get them on record, acknowledging that you're a man or a woman. Are you the defendant presumed innocent? Am I presumed innocent? You got to get them to it. Okay, say it on the record. You could also, if you want, you write these down, you want to hand it to them. You just want to get this on record. Is the court sanctioned and limited by the state constitution? Meaning, is the, is the, the court ordered and limited, their law is limited by the state constitution? In other words, they can't act outside the constitution. Anything outside the constitution is void. Well, doesn't that fall in line with what we're saying, okay? So, here's another thing that we've got to worry about. Is there an injured party? Who? A child support agency or a state cannot be an injured party because you cannot question your accuser. You have the right to question your accuser, okay? How are you going to question a child support agency? How did you injure a child support agency? How did you injure a state? You cannot. You can only injure another living human being. Okay? Where is the evidence you caused an injury, in fact? What is the actual proof of injury? These are, now I'm going to show you that you, you need these things. Okay? Now, right, you're going to ask, it is my understanding men and women have inalienable rights secured by the Constitution? Never let the court child support agency get away with stealing your constitutional rights by calling you the following term. Do not let them call you an obligor. I'm not an obligor. I'm a man. I'm a woman. If you're going to call me an obligor, I want to, I want to see where I agreed. Where's my signature on this contract? You can only be an obligor if you agreed. You consented. Where's, where's this contract that you, you guys are alleging uh, that I'm obligated to. Because an obligor is, is a contractual term. Okay? Now, this is the definition. Obligor, the person obligated to pay child support. Also referred to as a non-custodial parent or NCP. You are a father and a mother. See, a father has rights under the Constitution. And uh, there's case laws... Um, by the Supreme Court. Okay. And here's some other terms. All right. So I'll let you guys read that. You could find that in the glossary of common child support terms. That's the link. Okay. I'll probably put it in the description. Again, you are a father or a mother. Do not let them get away with calling you something else. All right. We covered all of this, but here's the here's the case law, and from what I understand, uh, when properly cited, this case law has never been hasn't been defeated because it's still being cited up until this moment. Okay, so uh, the essence of our country is this: that a law repugnant to the Constitution is void, and that courts as well as other departments are bound by that instrument. Okay. All right, you know what? Let's look up the word repugnant. Uh, 
unacceptable, okay? Distasteful, unacceptable is the word I would use. Incompatible. So it's incompatible with the Constitution. It's unacceptable with the Constitution, all right? Uh, by law, it must be repugnant to the general law of the country. That's basically what we just uh, what I just showed you, okay? So this is Marbury versus Matt. So it's quite simple. The child support program is really, it's unconstitutional, okay? All right, so before we were talking about now we're going to talk about standing. Every All plaintiffs or petitioners or applicants, really, that's what they really are in child support. They show up to, uh, to court, and I've seen this. I actually have it on video. And really, all you're doing is you're, you're sitting down with one of these child support people, and you don't got to offer them any evidence whatsoever, and they fill out a petition for you, and the whole thing is started. And, and whoever's life is ruined, whoever is listed as the um, as the defendant, his life is ruined at that point. All right. Well, I have paperwork that you submit asking the the clerk for evidence submitted by the petitioner or plaintiff. All right. So you got to understand something. A lot of you got to get this concept. When you show up, you're going to be the defendant. As the defendant, you are presumed innocent. You don't have to show cause. Okay? You don't have to show your innocence. Like they're doing to the president right now. See, I watch what's going on with that right now. And it, a lot of these, like the child support laws, they're really basically like communist laws. It's... It has nothing to do with the Constitution. It's what they do is they project everything onto other. What what they do is it's called projection. Everything that they're guilty of doing, they accuse their enemy of doing. Okay, so everything that they're accusing the president of is what they're doing. It's called projection. It's a it's a anarchist tool. So if they're accusing you. If 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 they're uh, colluding with the Russians, you know what they do? With the help of the media, they accuse the president of colluding with the Russians. And it's all fake. Okay? So, they have you in court, even though you're listed as a defendant, aren't you the one that has to prove that you're paying child support? Why do you have to prove you're paying child support? You don't have to prove you're paying child support. They have to prove that you're not paying child support. You understand? You should just maintain that you're supporting your child. And that's it. I'm supporting my child. You don't need to know. Boy, is my, is my child uh, in the hospital right now? Did I do something that caused the child to be injured? See, what they do is when the mother goes and applies for welfare... It, and, and by the way, I was reading this before I started making a video. It's, it's literally called a quid pro quo. They call it a quid pro quo. I don't feel like going to look for it. I'll be honest with you. Okay? So the woman or the, the man, they're applying for welfare. And in order to get it, they got to say, well, you can have my support rights. I don't know what support rights are. I haven't been able to fi find a law what support rights are. So really what the state is, is, is uh, the, the, the for the agency, they're a debt collector. That's all they're doing. That's all they're doing. Okay. So, you know, they assign their support rights. So that means they're allowed to harass you and send letters to your job, your bank, uh, and, and destroy your life. Okay. And that's what's, you know, what's going on. All right, so right here, I'm going to show you that uh, in order for the petitioner to have standing, this is, by the way, this is, this case law right here is proof, okay? This is from the uh, Cornell website. I took this screenshot, all right? And what are they quoting right here? Blue Jan versus Defenders of Wildlife, all right? 
there is a three-part test to determine whether a party so in other words the plaintiff or the petitioner for child support they have to have standing they don't have standing the case they have the case has to be dismissed I'm not saying it's going to be dismissed I'm saying it should be dismissed and what you should focus on is saying hold on a second where is the evidence introduced by the petitioner, plaint, uh, plaintiff, whatever you want to call them, whatever they're calling them? Where is the where's the evidence of standing? Okay. So the evidence of standing is an irreducible constitutional minimum of standing contains three elements. First, the plaintiff must have suffered an injury of fact of an invasion or an invasion of a legally protected interest now this could be used for you later on if you were to sue them because they deprived you of what your legally protected interest okay it could be one of your rights secured by the constitution okay it has to be an actual imminent and it can't be child support by the way is completely hypo uh hypothetical or conjectural what they're conjecturing is that uh, you not paying child support is causing the mother or the father to go on child support that's what they're conjecturing they don't say it but that's the conjecture well we just see right here they can't do that second there must be a connection a causal connection between the injury and and your conduct well I just gave it to you they're claiming that you're not paying child support and that caused the uh, the mother or father, custodial parent, will use it in this, you know, right now we'll use it because it's easy to understand, uh, caused that mother or father to go on child support, whoever has custody of the children. Here's the thing also, and I'm going to do it in another video, the next video. Fathers have rights. You never, even though you're not living, you always have custody of your children because it's your property. Your, chil your, your, your children are your property. Okay? They cannot take take it away from you. But they use terms, non-custodial parent, to, uh, because it's, a, it's an obvious word, non-custody. So if you have non-custody, that means that the, the child is not living with you. Well, let's say the child is living with you a couple days a week. That means they're living with you a couple days a week. So it doesn't mean the mother has full custody. You understand? So that's how they, that's what they're doing. All these little word games. Okay? But they have to have causal evidence. Number three, third, it must be likely, as opposed to speculative, that the injury will be redressed by a favorable, favorable decision. Well... If you can't prove an injury in fact, you can't, you know, if you can't prove it's actual or imminent, like uh, imminent means also like imminent danger, an actual injury or imminent injury, they have no evidence. So number three, if you can't prove one or two, number three doesn't exist. Okay, redressed by a favorable decision. So if you go to a trial, if you have no evidence to offer a, a jury to see, they can't they, they they can't move forward with the you know with a favorable decision. It's that simple. Okay, so I know the why. Well, I, I mean, I can't believe the video goes forty minutes. I mean, Jesus Christ, excuse me. Uh, it's amazing, but I'm gonna end it here. Okay, and I'm gonna make another video very soon. Cause I got more stuff to do. I don't want to put it all in one video, but understand that you want to take the power away from these people. Do not, do not let them get away with calling you their, their terms. That's how to get away with. All right. Taking away your constitutional rights. All right. A non-custodial parent does not have rights. Okay. They do not have rights. A person is under the jurisdiction of the federal government. Okay? You don't want to be a person. You want to be a man or a woman. Okay? Because they have constitutional rights. 
Mm, that's it. I'm going to leave it there. Again, my email address is rick, R-I-C-K, 0327 at me.com if you're interested in receiving uh, paperwork in exchange for a gift. All right, guys, I'll talk to you soon.